Welcome back. You know about Superman, Batman, Spider-Man, but those crime-fighting characters are not only the subject of comics and blockbuster movies. In a certain way, they yeah. exist in real life. No, seriously, they dress up like superheroes, people do, and they pledge to make society a better place. Vanessa Tyler spent a night on the streets with them and introduces us now to a growing movement of real-life superheroes. Vanessa. Well, Jim and Kitey, it's a mask like this that conceal the identities of men and women who have pledged to do good and fight evil. They call themselves real-life superheroes. They are on a mission, and their ranks have been growing since 9-11. They have day jobs, but at night, they take to the streets of Gotham. <laughs> Mannered by day, Chris Pollock will transform right before your eyes. Since his powers can only go so far, he doesn't forget the bulletproof vest. Give him a minute, soon he will become a force against evil. He is a real life superhero, part of a movement gaining momentum. There is even a website, a registry of superheroes from around the nation, around the world. I'm the Dark Guardian. But he is not solo. Just like in the comic books, every superhero has partners. All down for the cause, and the Dark Guardian does not take on Gotham alone. On the streets of New York, you will find the Dark Guardian along with two others. I am Phantom Zero. My name is Life. The way I dress is a uh, very classic superhero, a little spirit, a little green hornet. And together, they are part of the real-life superhero movement. Well, you Life superhero movement is a movement of people who care to go out and make a difference. I was uh, curious about the real life superhero community and I had learned a lot about them and I thought it was an unorthodox way of doing good in the world. This night rain torments the city. Doesn't stop them from looking for ways they can help. Have you ever stopped a crime in progress? Have you ever been in any type of danger? Uh, yeah, I do come across danger at times. You okay? You better, you better have a badge, man. Don't do not, if you don't have a badge, don't come over here f***ing with me, man. Good. This is in Washington Square Park a couple of weeks ago. The footage courtesy of Superheroes Anonymous. Their mission? To rid the park of drug dealers. We've had people flash a gun at us, but uh, I'm not backing down. This town deserves a better class of criminal. Well, the police do know about me. Uh, I've actually been to the precinct and spoke with them. They have a concern for my safety, but uh, it seems like they really respect that I'm trying to do something, but they don't want me to get hurt. They are not armed. That would be illegal. A lot of times I haven't had much trouble from the authorities, uh, with the sole exception of going into the subway wearing a mask. Mostly what they do is community outreach. And this night, not fit for a dog, they show what the movement is really all about. The homeless, um, when you're going up to them and you're giving them food and vitamins and socks and toothbrushes and razors, they don't care if you're stark naked or wearing a clown suit doing it. They're just happy to get that stuff. They're happy to see that someone cares. Uh, that's great. You know, God bless you. And you know what I'm saying? That's good. That's good. We can save this world. Superheroes saving the world, like Superman, Spider-Man, Iron Man, and now them. Well, my philosophy is that there's a hero in everybody, and we need to work hard to become that hero, go out, make a difference, and uh, make a positive change. Okay, so what do police think of this? You heard in the piece they say police are more concerned with the safety of the superheroes. By the way, they use their own money to buy those items for the homeless. Want to join them? You need a costume and a pledge to make society a better place. Heidi.